JJ, can you see the slideshow? Awesome. Well, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the Jan May 4th uh, roundtable. Uh, I never say this enough, but we certainly appreciate you guys being on here because the uh, information you share back and forth with each other is invaluable. And that's what makes CTAP really a great organization is uh, how you guys depend on each other. And it's just incredible. So thank you for being here. Uh, if these sessions are Zoom based and uh, we do post them on YouTube. So if you do not wish to have your picture displayed, certainly participate with your video turned off. Otherwise, your participation serves as consent to your picture being posted. So we do have some breaking news. Uh, knowledge is on the way. That's what Neil deGrasse Tyson tells us every month, and we're happy to have his reassurances on that. Knowledge is on the way. Knowledge is coming or not. I added that myself. So we want to kick off with uh, a deal. Uh, T today is Robin's anniversary. She, uh, I don't know how many years it is, but it, it's uh, enough that we ought to say happy anniversary. So happy anniversary, Robin. And I hope that you get a, a good uh, chicken fried steak or something tonight. Good luck on that. And uh, so may the fourth be with you. We all know that it is a Star Wars day and uh, may the fourth be with you. That's always real clever. And so Yoda says, uh, best Star Wars memes are waiting for you right here. And uh, the, the only just begun Star Wars memes they have. Yoda has a particular way of speaking. <clears throat> Han Solo says, Either you love Star Wars or you're wrong. Well, I'm not all sure about that. Uh, here's a, a Anakin Skywalker says, I sense a disturbance in the Force, Master, as though a million, may the fourth be with you, memes be created. And let's see what else we got here. There's a Yoda. Uh, he's doing something. Oh, perplexing is House Bill 100. Yes, Yoda is. It's a little hard to understand. I think we agree. Uh, uh, and, and to be honest with all you guys, I'm not even a Star Wars fan. Uh, for those of you keeping a tally, uh, Star Trek forever in my book. And so uh, going back to this, um, uh, these roundtable discussions are really what makes our organization grow. And I was thinking about it uh, the other day and, uh, just we kind of stumbled on this because of COVID, and these have. Uh, they record anything on there that's recorded. Same ones, just playing. Yeah. Yes. Thank. Thank you. Uh, and, and so, uh, uh, in, in, anyway, something that we stumbled upon during COVID, I think, has become one of our strongest parts of CTAT is that we have these opportunities to get together monthly via Zoom and share ideas back and forth. So thank you for taking an hour out of your month to come in here. And I know every hour is precious. Thank you for being on here to help your fellow members. And I'm not gonna go through this real quick, but of course, if this is your first one, uh, we have a lot of programming at CTAT, uh, Next Gen Administrators, these round tables. We have the conferences coming up in May and district program evaluations if you need one of those. So if you're new, uh, you're welcome to that program. Make sure everything that we do on YouTube, except for the next gen, is posted on uh, YouTube, everything that we record on Zoom. So you can catch up on these if you miss out. And also, if you have a question, uh, the Connect CTAT discussion forum, uh, it, uh, every, every time I look on there, I read those every morning and I learn something every morning, it seems. And if I don't, uh, if it's not new technical information, it has something to do about the temperature of what's going on in the districts. So uh, keep those posts coming. They're very valuable. And uh, 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 use that Connect CTAD if you haven't. It's a great resource. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the CTE newsletters from TEA, make sure that you go to the TEA website and click on that tile for the CTE newsletters. And that'll uh, not only will you be able to 
subscribe to them, but you'll also be able to see the ones that have been issued in the past. Uh, the summer conference is coming. Uh, uh, Lindsay made a report to the uh, area presidents in an earlier meeting that our conference at the Anatole July 10th through 13th in Dallas is that we're uh, over 150 above the pace. So this is going to be a, a great uh, a great conference, well attended. And keep in mind for those of you questioning whether or not to bring your teachers, if we get to fifteen hundred attendees, uh, Sammy is going to joust uh, out in the middle of the ring at uh, uh, medieval times. So I'm going to chip in on that too. And uh, so let's get to fifteen hundred and see if we can watch Sammy get on that horse and run that joust. Uh, we do have a call for presentations, and that ended uh, uh, on May 1st uh, earlier. However, uh, we may be reaching out to you. Um, Leslie has gone through all the presentations, and she's done a great job organizing them with Robin and uh, Lindsay. And what we're looking at now is if there's some uh, areas that we want to target specifically for presentations, then... Uh, we may reach out to uh, the area presidents to recruit for specific presentations. So thank you all for collecting. Uh, Lindsay, if Lindsay's on here, she may want to share in a minute that uh, we have had uh, a great response to the presentations. And that's what really what drives the conference. The conference is as good as your presentations are, and uh, they're always fantastic. So thank you guys. Don't forget that this year we're targeting business, tech ed, law, and education and training teachers. So um, if you have some teachers that aren't getting meaningful professional development across the state, then make sure that you provide them. So uh, I think that we have some great sessions for business. I know we have for law. The Dallas Bar Association is doing three big presentations at the uh, conference for the law teachers, tech ed, Kim Cook has recruited those, and BPA has recruited the business sessions. Diana Weber, uh, thank you, Rick, for being supportive on that. And uh, also, uh, Next Gen is closed. We have one more session. Uh, we'll do the administrator uh, panel uh, for, for the Next Gen attendees in May. And then we will kick back up again in September. So if you haven't been a member of the next gen and you have less than five years experience, you may want to jump in there for the fall 23 cohort number four. Uh, also, for those of you that attended on April 4th, the Zoom that was the CTAT TASBO uh, uh, business, uh, school student based business and tracking revenue, uh, TASBO did a great job with that. And I think there were some great resources that were put out and we're working with TASBO. Uh, the recording system was a little funky. We're working with them right now to try to get that posted on YouTube, but we're gonna host another one of those. So if you didn't get to see it, we're gonna do another one. It's just the legislative session is really eating up a lot of uh, bandwidth. Uh, some updates, uh, PT or Sherry uh, from the TA leadership committee update. Do y'all have anything to, uh, mention yeah. that. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Um, so our last meeting was April 19th. Um, and at that point, some of y'all have actually already um, done a few of these things that they were talking to us about, like the listening tours and the program of study refresh. Um, those were two big topics in our leadership conversation. Um, they wanted to reiterate that they really are not looking to remove any programs or remove any courses. If anything, try to add more flexibility in. Um, when I personally initially sat through our listening tour at the beginning of the month, um, I, I gave the feedback of, sure, if you want to create a new program of study, go for it. But when I looked at it and thought about it a little bit more, one of the programs of study was actually um, for a real estate license. And right now with our marketing sequence, if we had a real estate course, then our students would actually take the IBC. But if they create its own program of study, 
then you'd have to have a completer in a full on real estate sequence plus the exam. So they are going to be giving um, out a Google Doc of some sort or a way to create or to get feedback after the listening tours. So at a listening tour, you provide feedback and then afterwards they're supposed to be sending something out. So if anybody has seen that and I've missed it, please let me know. Um, but they will be garnering feedback. So even though I switched course on um, some of my feedback, they're going to be looking for it. So if, if, the, um, if you got a chance to go to those listening tours, I hope you found them beneficial. And then the other portion was about um, signing up for advisory committees. They really need people to be on those groups as they um, change and develop some new things within TEA courses, program study, all of that. The CTE teacher professional development updates. So they've got some different professional development that they want to put out. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And then they also had um, Kez Wold, the associate commissioner from the Texas Department of Family Services. And Kez was actually talking about getting students um, into internships with Department of Family Services. Um, and some of the folks on the call, like I know Rachel Binky was asking quite a few questions, trying to see if it would be a good spot for human services and education students. And it's actually taking place in a couple of different districts in um, Northeast Texas. I don't remember, I don't have the names written down, but just some good information. So look for that to be coming out. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Sherry, thank you for that info. And uh, thank you guys for serving on that leadership committee and the listening tours. If you haven't got, uh, I went to one uh, at Julie Service Center in Region 10 and they really did a good job and they're real informative. So thank you guys there's so much two, for that. Update. There's two, two more virtual ones uh, to reiterate that. May 9th is one and May 12th. So it's they're not over yet. So just like and, you know. uh, PT, I don't know if Lisa's in here, but the Region 11 folks are hosting a watch party where they're going to put it on a big screen at Region 11 for the virtuals. So thanks for bringing that up. I forgot about that. We just had the tour in the Houston version. And right after I got an email that had the link to that Google form, it was just one question. It was if you have any additional feedback. And so that's all the Google the question was as far as being able to go back and add in more information. Well, Renee, that's a great point, but I think that you could email Marchette or Les or Lacey or any of those guys and uh, they, they would uh, make sure that gets to the right place because uh, I do know they, they do utilize that input. Uh, thanks, Renee. Okay, so moving around along. And Renee, thanks for hosting Robin and I at your uh, area meeting last month. That was terrific. We enjoy uh, you. Always come back again, anytime. Uh, Heather said that, uh, let's see, I won't say this before we move on, but Heather posted in the chat that Region 17 is also offering a watch party on May the 9th. And uh, I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Heather. And um, because when you hear that stuff, you naturally want to discuss it with your colleagues. So I strongly encourage you guys to attend those virtual uh, watch parties. Great job, uh, our server center folks do as always. Uh, nothing new. This is stuff that we've had posted for a couple of months as far as the sun setting IBCs. Uh, just kind of remind everyone to go back and check that. And then uh, for those of you, the proposed requirements for the CCMR credits, that has been pushed back a year. So what was going to start in 2023 is now 2024. And uh, that's 2024 graduates have to have one course aligned in a program of study. 2025 graduates have to be concentrators. And 2026 graduates have to be completers in order to learn, earn the full point for leader and IBC credit. Also, if you get a chance, reach out and send an email to your friendly TEA staff and tell them thank you for the listening tours and how much we appreciate uh, what they're doing to seek input. Because every time we get a chance to provide input to the staff down there, I think that makes the um, decisions better and at least more informed. And I think that TA leadership committee that so many of you sat on, like PT and Sherry, were 
talking about. I think that's uh, great information they get from those guys too. Uh, the CTE program study refresh is going on right now. And uh, part of that recess is they're moving everything over from 130 eventually to 127. Um, and then uh, the new occupational the OSHA class was at the state board in February, and that'll go for Dick. Go for it, might, might have went for second reading, it hasn't had second reading yet. Uh, but anyway, there's a new OSHA course coming, and they are going to add OSHA TEKS to every principal's class. And you'll get information out on that pretty quick if you haven't already. And then, of course, we've already talked about the listening tours. And uh, last month, we were holding uh, meetings, and we had a Zoom over the four-day week, and we were talking about what is a minute. And in regards to the overall minute requirement. And of course, as Bill Clinton so aptly put, when you say, what is a minute? It really depends on what your definition of is is. And so the four day week, we had a big Zoom on that, spent an hour and used up a lot of air talking about that. Well, the four, the 8,100 minutes is dead. It was, uh, it, it lived a good life from January to April and uh, we had, uh, uh, we feel sad for it, but uh, rest in peace, 8,100 minutes. Uh, go back to doing your 45 minutes per class, just like you always have, and that will be the requirement. And like Julie was saying, uh, they've sent that out from their service center. And so if we have some questions about the 8,100 minutes, Julie has the most updated and best information uh, uh, that she has already provided to the Region 10 folks. On the legislative update, uh, we talked earlier in the week about House Bill 100, and uh, there has been some movement on that. Uh, but just to recap, here is how House Bill 100 impacts CTE. For all of you know that if you look in your summary of finances, you see all of these allotments. And of course, CTE is just one of many allotments, but CTE and SPED are unique in that the FTEs that are taken from CTE and SPED are removed from the regular allotment. And it's been that way since time uh, has created uh, funding formulas. And it goes back, I traced it back at least to 1970. And so this funding formula in some form or another the basic allotment uh, uh, times the FTEs times some type of multiplier has existed since uh, the 60s. And so uh, uh, they, we have all these allotments. And so what House Bill 100 did in the simplest of terms is it moves the 1.0 from the CTE allotment to the regular allotment. And uh, whether it was intentional or not, uh, it created a 73% cut in the CTE allotment. And so, as you can see, if you're a district with uh, a $7 million CTE allotment, then you're going to be left with $1.9 million because 73% of that is going from the career tech allotment to the regular allotment should House Bill 100 become law. And so we had a big Zoom on that, sent out a big email. Uh, there is movement on this bill. Uh, Representative King is working with us. Megan from his office uh, has been emailing back and forth with Robin all morning. Uh, we have three different amendment languages that we're looking at that would correct this on the Senate side. So for the time, uh, make sure that you hold all calls. Uh, they're asking just hold all calls and let's see what they come up with. So um, uh, thank you guys uh, so much. And uh, it's important that you reach out to your representatives, but uh, let, let's, let's see what we need to reach out to them about. And so let's kind of go into a holding pattern and hold all calls and see what uh, progress gets done on those three amendments. Uh, CTAD is all about working together. And uh, uh, you guys know that better than anybody. And so at this time, we're going to go to the meat of it. And uh, 
uh, get back into the gallery. And here we are. Uh, can everybody see this in gallery mode now? Perfect. So at this time, uh, unless you have any questions, we appreciate you coming and I'm going to stop the recording. And uh, uh, so uh, if you have anybody that missed uh, what the discussion afterwards, then make sure you have them contact me uh, by my cell phone or by email. So thank you guys very much uh, for listening to that update.